won't gain nearly as much strength from mashing a big gear on your bike as you will from going to the gym. And more importantly, you won't see the same kind of increase in your power from doing low cadence work as you will from gym work, which in study after study shows improvement. Basically, so as usual, uh, Dylan Johnson says that low cadence is not good uh, because there's no data in the literature. Now, this is interesting, but that's mainly because people who write scientific papers don't always write papers that are useful uh, as an application. So what we're going to do is show why maybe low cadence is actually quite good. Um, so first of all, I'll just play this clip from Jay Vine, which Chris Miller did. A lot less weight and much more than talk. Like he's so focused on the talk. A lot less weight. <laughs> yeah. How, how often were you doing weights? I was doing, well, same sort of two, two sessions a week uh, during, during build, but it was heavier stuff, whereas very much, much more rep stuff. Okay. The talk stuff is much, much more intense. So I've been working my way over 70 Newton meters for 10 minutes straight. So what is that? Like That's 350 watts at 40 RPM? No. Yeah, so I did them the other day. Um, they're only four minute reps, but I did them at 400 watts at 50, 50 RPM. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> um, Oh, okay. Pretty pretty uncomfortable. Um, and then we'll get into some more some more details. So, what did Jay Vine say? He said he did less gym work, more low cadence work because he was really targeting Newton meters. Now, John Wakefield, he is a big he trains like half the World Tour riders. He also ride, trains for UAE Emirates, so he could actually be Jay Vine's coach. I'm not 100 sure who he is, and this is what he says anyway. Low cadence or torque work on the bike is not strength as we think or know it. It creates neuromuscular pathways, which are communicative channels between the brain and the muscles, um, and that you shouldn't analyze it in newton meters. So you can remember Jay Vine talking about doing 70 newton meters. Um, and then people asking some questions. He prefers four in 10 minutes. You can do a variation of that. But the key thing is to focus on the torque. So what you want to do is just not say, oh, I want to do 400 watts at 50 cadence. You go, I want to do 70 newton meters for five, 10 minutes. And then, um, yeah. Uh, so, and then this is, again, this is what he says, where you should prescribe them. It's actually a really useful thread. Um, you do them all year, but typically in pre-season, you don't have to have fresh legs. So you could do really hard intervals and then do them on the day after. Um, and then he basically just keeps saying uh, all the rest of it, um, that it's just good stuff and that four minutes is pretty good. Um, and again, there are no studies that have examined the effect of low cadence uh, 40 games on unsighted performance. That doesn't mean they're effective. It just hasn't been investigated. And this is the thing is that if you say 80 RPM is low cadence, and that's obviously not low cadence, that's like my preferred cadence. And it's probably, it seemed to be quite high compared to like even back in the day. Luke Plapp says that they're, they're rough. And again, he says to do them seated. So again, there's quite a lot of evidence here. Um, Jerome Swart, who also is a UAE coach, he again says, um, it's a fundamental part of training. I've watched numerous world tour riders set new PBs for power after completing a good block of torque work where they've achieved PB for torque. It's a foundation for producing power. And this all came along from Anna Kiesenhofer, who again was saying, why do people do do the the like low torque, low cadence stuff? And people are quoting Dylan Johnson saying, you know, there's no there's no cadence, uh, there's no uh, studies about it. But then most of the world tour coaches will prescribe it. Again, if we look at some other guys, we look at Bernal here, what's he doing? He's doing cadence stuff. Again, this is like an absolute classic in your uh, setup. They normally do 20 minutes. Pidcock did it before his intervals and you can see 45 cadence for five minutes, five minutes at like higher cadence. Um, but again, keeping the power constant, just changing the cadence. Um, and that's, this is done at a high, higher sort of power, maybe tempo. Um, we can also find Sam Carwell's data as well here. He was doing uh, power at fat max, which is also what Wout Van Aert does, um, where you really want to do the low cadence stuff in order to try and... This is a slightly different um, sort of adaption you're going for, but this again is to try and um, to preferentially like... Sorry, pre pre preferentially target the fast switch fibers so that they fatigue more um, and therefore you can... Uh, you basically like get more efficient. Wow, Bernard does this quite a lot. There's a video that I'll link below as well. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, is low cadence good? Yeah, probably. 
Um, I don't really do it myself. Um, I'm kind of tempted to give it a go, but it's one of those things where it's kind of like hard to do straight away, but I probably will give it a go. But anyway, the, the actual most annoying thing is to analyze it. You've got to use Golden Cheetah because Training Peaks um, doesn't do it. If we go on, uh, sorry, let me just go on my, my, if you go on like my training, if we, let's have a look at yesterday, um, when you analyze it, um, what you'll see is that it doesn't show up straight away. And there are these, these graphs that you can get but they don't seem to work too well. And obviously my internet's too slow, so you can't see it anyway. But yeah, it's, um you can't actually use training peaks. So you can see here he's using golden cheetah to analyze, which is more of the reason why I haven't done it. Um, But anyway, that, that, that's just what it is. But yeah, if you go here, you can see like this obviously does power and stuff, but doesn't have any torque. And again here, this is the, this, the graph which you can use, but if we use the Y axis on my one, it says I should have torque, right? But it doesn't. It only has left, right, pedal smoothness, and this this stuff. So from my power meter, for some reason, it doesn't record torque. Obviously, it does because it records power and cadence. So it does record torque. Um, so yeah, there's nothing you can really see here. So we can do power balance, for example, against time. And you can see the difference in them. But that's kind of useless. You just want to see um, torque. You, you don't want to see torque effectiveness and stuff like that. So anyway, it's a bit annoying. Um, and like torque effectiveness, I can show you what it looks like, but torque effectiveness is a, a kind of useless value that is not too helpful. Um, but anyway, yeah, those are my thoughts about low cadence training. I think you probably should do it early season. Um, I, I also obviously think you should probably go to the gym as well, but I don't see why you wouldn't do both.